This is Dr. Kornman. We're going to talk about vertebrobasilar artery syndrome. Uh, this is an unusual syndrome, also known as vertebrobasilar artery insufficiency, vertebrobasilar artery ischemia, and Bowhunter's syndrome. This syndrome is due to a temporary loss of blood flow from the vertebral artery to the base of the brain. This occurs when rotating the head to one side and having the artery occlude or become pinched off due to an abnormal spur or ligament. The symptoms when turning the head to the side of the stenosis or narrowing are dizziness, vertigo or a feeling of the room spinning, visual disturbance or spots before the eyes and difficulty with focusing, nystagmus where the eyes pulsate back and forth, and finally, ataxia, or difficulty with keeping balance. As you turn your head to the side and the oxygen is cut off to the brain, you develop problems with standing. This can lead to Wallenberg syndrome, or a stroke at the base of the brain. This is more rare, but this is an infarction or a injury to the posterior inferior cerebellar artery. You lose sensation on the same side of the face and the opposite side of the body. You develop problems with dysphagia or swallowing, dysarthria or problem speaking, and again, as we talked about earlier, ataxia and vertigo. The vertebral artery starts as a branch off of the subclavian artery in the upper chest, which is off the aorta. This artery, as you can see from the diagram on the sign, winds through the vertebral forum from C6 through C1. And between C1 and 2, as you notice up on the top, it makes a sharp left or right turn. And this artery is stretched by the normal rotation between C1 and C2. Here's a case example. This was a 41-year-old male who had dizziness and vertigo when he turned his head to the right. A CTA was performed, intracranial, extracranial, meaning in the skull and outside the skull. A CTA is a CAT scan with dye injected into the arterial system which lights the arteries up. This CTA was performed both in the neutral position and with the patient's head turned to the right. This is an example of what a head straight up and down looks like as the person's lying on their back and when they rotate their head as far as they can to the right side. Here in this picture you see a neutral position you see a normal caliber artery. So if you look at the bottom where that circle is, that's the vertebra. And if you look to the sides in the upper part of the circle, you'll see those little worms, as they look like almost, coming out. Those are the arteries that are lit up by the dye. You can see here when the patient turns his head to the right, where the yellow arrow is, that that artery is actually being impaled by a small bone spur. And you can see that almost 70% of the diameter of the artery is constricted at this point. Here you can see the same point if you look at that center right area where there's a small bone spur pressing into the artery causing significant constriction and kinking of this artery. This next picture shows the images from front to back in a neutral position. The arrow shows the left artery, and as the artery comes in and out of the planes, remember the CT is one simple cut, you're seeing the fully intact artery in this position. The artery continues up, and now in the side view again, you see when the head is turned to the right, the artery is still intact. If you look at that uh, sort of semi-opaque uh, tube that's coming up in between the two vertebra. Now if we w move one image forward, we will see the artery is constricted here. This arrow points to the diameter of the artery, which is probably only 20, maybe even only 10% of the initial diameter of the artery. This is where it was constricted, and this is where the blood flow stops. If we go just a couple images in front, again, you'll see the normal diameter of the artery as that relatively large dot, and that is where the artery continues to flow without restriction. This artery is constricted at the C12 level, 
and this is going to be a case from residency uh, where one of our radiologists contributed. On the left, this is an image of a digital subtraction angiography. This is where the bone is actually removed by the computer, so you only look at the artery. On the left side, you see where the artery turns around. You see where it makes a left and a right turn. If you go to the right side, it's a little higher, but on that right turn, you see how it really narrows down. This is where the narrowing or stenosis occurs. This is an image on the right where you can see a very th faint arrow pointing to the additional spur coming off of C1. And on the left, you can see those little claw spurs coming off the side. This is the problem. This is the structure that's compressing the artery. And this is why when you turn your head to the side, you end up having significant problems, again, with dizziness, vertigo, visual problems, among others. This syndrome is called bow hunter syndrome. If you look at the picture on the bottom, you'll see that this archer is turning his head substantially to the side, and some of these bow hunters actually would fall out of their tree stands because of the vertigo and ataxia. It's called positional or rotational occlusion of the vertebral artery, and this insufficiency is secondary to a small uh, spur. It typically occurs at C12 because of the mechanical compression and the stretch of the vertebral artery, but it may occur anywhere along the vertebral course related to bone spurs or osteophytes, instability of C12, hypertrophy of the atlanto-occipital membranes, or paravertebral muscle bands, and the treatment of this is generally surgical. Thank you for your attention.